Hello world, this is Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and professor from Johnson County Community College. In this short screencast, I'm going to talk about access views. But I want to point out that I made a lot of YouTubes back in 2010, and they're still pretty much relevant today. But Access 2016, the current version that's being delivered through Office 365, has changed a little bit. And in my previous YouTubes, I discussed object views. And I mainly focused on the table object and the table views between design view and data sheet view. Tables really haven't changed much over the different versions of access. They're still the primary object that is used to store and define data. One minor difference is that the text field has now become the short text field and the memo field has now become the long text field. But other than that, tables really haven't changed much. In this short screencast, I want to focus on the views of the other objects. And let's talk about queries, for example. When we double click a query, we open it up in data sheet view. Of course, we can go to design view and see what tables are in play and see what fields are in play. We can also look at calculated fields. In this case, the customer name became the last name, followed by a comma and a space concatenated to the first name. But what might be really interesting to view is the third view of a query, SQL view. Because as we work in design view, as we add the fields to the query grid, we're actually creating SQL behind the scene. We can go to SQL view and see what SQL has been created by design view by grabbing fields and pulling them into the grid. And sometimes when I'm teaching SQL, I'll start a query in design view and add perhaps one field and look at the SQL. Select the customer number from the customer's table. Now, the SQL written in access includes the table name dot syntax, but we could just as easily include just the field name and run the query and see the results of that query. So SQL view does provide an interesting way for you to practice your SQL skill. And I've got Custno, F name, and last name. So queries have three different views, data sheet view to see the data, design view to design the query using a graphical user interface, and SQL view if you really want to write the code. Also notice that when you're in a select query, going to data sheet view and running the query do exactly the same thing. Now running the query when we're in an update query, a make table append update or delete query, the ones that have an exclamation point, runs that process which changes data. But when you're in a select query, which is the most common query by far, viewing the data sheet and running the query are the exact same thing. For forms, we have form view, design view, where we can move and modify any control in any way. And Microsoft has also introduced a third view, layout view, which is really sort of a hybrid between the form view and the design view. It's a hybrid because we can see the data in the record. As I move through these records, I can see the data. Unfortunately, I cannot change data because changing data is the responsibility of form view. If I want to change Bear Valley Adventures to Bear Valley Trips, I have to be in form view. But layout view lets us resize or move controls fairly easily while we're watching this data. It provides more information about the data that's in the control as opposed to design view, which simply shows what field the control is bound to. The moral to the story with layout view is that you can accomplish everything you need to do in form view, which is enter and edit data, or design view, which is modify the controls on the form. But you might want to wander into layout view from time to time to make sure you're aware of some of the modifications you can make, such as resizing controls very easily while seeing data. And the other thing you need to know about layout view is that it looks a lot like form view. So if you're trying to enter data and it's not working, well, it's probably because you're in layout view versus form view. The report views are the trickiest of all. If I double click a report, I end up in report view. Report view is the same thing as print preview, except it does not show the page breaks nor the page header nor the page footer information. So when we're in report view, it's like we're seeing the report in one long contiguous report. There are no page breaks calculated. I think this is for performance purposes. So we can see all the data on the report without asking access to worry about figuring out the page numbers and the page breaks. 
print preview shows you exactly how many pages and how that data will lay out on each individual page. Design view is the same as it's always been, where we can modify any property of any control. And layout view is where we can resize the controls just like we could in form layout view very easily by seeing the data. Of course, all of the data in a report is read-only. We can never edit data in a report. But I have started to warm up to layout view because so many times in a report, all you want to do is resize the columns, as I'm doing right now. And layout view is a very handy way to do this, as opposed to going to design view, where you could be resizing these text boxes but not really having a clue whether you're really resizing them in a way that shows all the data. Layout view shows you that. Thank you for listening.